Hello everyone. Today our presentation is titled Types and Causes of Conflict. And the objective in this presentation is to find out what are the various types, you know, typologies and um, explanations or causes of conflict. Why do conflicts occur? How do we explain you know the reasons behind certain conflicts? You know, so those are the two major issues that this presentation is going to take care of. Now from previous lectures we have from previous presentation rather we have underscored the fact that conflict you know have various meanings to various individuals and in various professions all right so it is difficult to try and um, box the concept of conflict into one particular ideology or explanation conflict is a very dynamic um, concept right we have also talked about the fact that conflict is a constant condition of human society so wherever you have individuals coexisting um, there's bound to be conflict um, in such in such environment in such a society all right now here we're told that conflict is as old as man because obviously wherever people wherever you find two people in in in, in existence or cohabiting conflicts you know um, are inevitable almost inevitable all right and it doesn't it doesn't require it doesn't mean that there has to be the use of weapons or physical force violence in conflict conflicts can happen with or without um weapons of violence or or acts of violence all right and conflicts are not also restricted to certain age groups uh because even even babies you know display some acts of conflict episodes you know that display conflict when they cry when they bite when they pinch or scratch with their fingernails you know they are trying to explain or express a kind of emotion that they feel all right so conflicts are not are not restricted to adults or um any certain age um, group of people all right of course as long as human society exists we're told that conflicts will remain a constant part of of our existence and it's also believed that there are two aspects of the human nature there's the evil aspect or the bad aspect you know which which is prone to conflict either to cause conflict or to respond to conflict also in a conflictual or um in a in, in an aggressive violent manner and there's the good nature which responds reacts you know um, promotes cooperation respect peace and so on and so forth conflict manifests you know in various forms anger depression suicide hatred destruction quarrel you know all of these are manifestations of conflict and um, it is believed that when individuals display uh, display emotions of greed, of covetousness, self-centeredness, you know, and all of these other um, envy, arrogance, you know, it is believed that they are that they are exhibiting the evil or the bad nature, you know, um, of man. And of course, like we said, this this bad nature of man could either be a cause of conflict or a consequence of conflict. So it can it can it can be it can it can it can be provoked by conflict or it can actually itself cause conflict all right i hope that is clear so conflict is is central to human existence and as long as humans exist conflicts will also exist all right now in understanding conflict we have talked about some of the definitions we will reiterate some of those definitions here again uh, we're told that conflict is an existing state of disagreement or hostility uh, between two or more people so two people are in disagreement two people are in a hostile relationship you know conflict is occurring okay uh, and simply put says conflict is when two or more parties do not agree on an issue so when there's a disagreement either about either on an issue or on a cause of action whatever it is as long as disagreements occur um, those are conflicts situations when goals are incompatible you know when views are not do not align um conflicts have occurred 
uh, in, in, in politics, conflicts, conflict is said to be struggle between two or more groups over resources, over power, you know. Um, and of course, in these kinds of conflicts in politics, which should not necessarily be, uh, there, there usually tends to be some kind of intent, you know, to neutralize the opponent or to cause harm to the opponent, which, which is not the ideal, all right, because conflict should not necessarily result in neutralizing the opponent's view or causing any kind of harm, whether physical or psychological or emotional, to the opponent or to the rival. All right, so this this definition is given from from an African politics perspective, Nigerian politics perspective, where where the the consequence of political conflict, you know, is intended to cause harm, to eliminate, you know, if I could use that word, to eliminate um, the rival completely. All right, so um, those are those are some of the the explanations of conflict from a more general perspective, and then of course from um, a political, um, from a political perspective, all right. Now, conflict can be used, and it's most often used interchangeably with other concepts like controversy, contests, war, you know, clash, rivalry, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to talk about a little about wars. How do we, how do we differentiate between conflicts and wars? Do they mean the same thing, or are they slightly different? All right. Now we're told that although all wars are conflict situations, right? Every war that, that you hear about is a conflict situation because two parties obviously are in disagreement and that's why the war is in progress or that's why the war happens or happened if it's in the past or in the present tense, right? But not all conflicts are wars. And this is where the, this is where the difference lies. Okay, so how do we define how do we identify a war situation as opposed to a conflict situation? A war is simply said to be um, a state of mutually declared aggression. And this is very key, mutually declared aggression. So there has to be a mutual declaration of aggression between the two parties. The two parties have to agree that there's an aggression and they have to mutually declare that they're going to war with one another. And they're not, they, they don't just have to be two parties all right um they have to be they have to also uh to also utilize conventional means you know the war has to be prosecuted using conventional means so there has to be soldiers there have to be better uniformed or on or on uniformed soldiers there has to be weapons used conventional weapons you know, depending on the kinds of war that is being fought and there has to be a third party a third party you know that is neutral and observing that the war is occurring within the rules of engagement. So certain features characterize a war. Number one is that there has to be mutually declared aggression among the parties involved. You know, the war has to be executed using conventional means, soldiers, weapons, and what have you. And then there has to be a third party you know, ensuring that the war is executed within the rules of engagement. You know, these features are not necessarily present in a conflict. When you have a conflict, you know, either within yourself, as we we'll look at the types of conflicts in a moment, but conflicts do not necessarily need to have mutually, um, you know, mutually declared aggression. You know, they don't, they, they, there doesn't have to be any mutual declaration in conflict. There doesn't have to be any third party um, observing a conflict. All right. So these are these are some of the characteristics that differentiate or distinguish wars from other kinds of conflict. And I've given an example that we should be able to identify with in this slide: the Boko Haram crisis uh, that we have had in Nigeria is largely a conflict, even though the Nigerian government, you know, um, or it even though it falls within the poor view of the global war on terror. All right, but it is largely a conflict because uh, the Nigerian state has not has not necessarily, you know, declared a war on the Boko Haram terrorists. Okay, um, all that is being done are actions that are try to suppress, uh, try to destabilize, 
you know, or try to contain the excesses of this criminal group. So it's not it's not a war. It's not a war per se, you know. But like every other terrorist um, activity in many other countries, it's, it's a conflict. Although it falls between the wider spectrum of the global war on terror, you know, which which in one on, on the one hand qualifies it also as as a war. All right. Well, maybe this is not a very good example of a conflict, you know, but of course we have examples of conflicts here and there, the, the headsmen crisis, you know, between farmers and, and cattle rearers. That also is a, is a conflict. You know, we have conflicts in several communities. We have conflicts between groups, Christians, Muslims. All of those are conflicts, conflict situations. They don't, they don't qualify as wars because there's no mutual declaration of aggression among parties. There's no third party, you know, ensuring that, that the conflict is occurring within the rules of engagement because there are, in fact, no rules of engagement in a conflict. There are no rules of engagement. All right. So those are those are some of the things that I think I should point out in trying to differentiate between wars and conflicts. All right. It says conflicts are related to, but they're technically different from wars because wars are a more technical concept. They involve more technicalities in comparison to conflicts. All right. Now, while conflicts are generally described as chaos, you know, um, any anywhere that there's chaos, whether whether violent chaos or non-violent chaos, you know, um, that is a conflict situation. Whereas war is a legally declared cause of action um, by constitutionally recognized groups of individuals or, or groups yes groups of individuals okay so that that is the difference between war and conflict you know some have said that conflicts also can be or wars rather can be identified by the number of casualties involved so when you have a you, you have you have a situation a conflict situation where the casualty involved is over 1000 then that is a war situation but in in recent times we have found that that Certain conflicts, which are not wars, you know, also have casualty levels that are very high, even higher than 1,000. You see, so that definition is, is not very accurate. That definition of conflict um, that, that counts the number of casualties to identify or differentiate between a war and conflict. That definition is not very, very, um, it's not very, very appropriate. All right. So that is the, the difference between, between conflicts and wars conflicts are more are more general you know the more general situation of disagreements of of um, rank or chaos among individuals or groups whereas wars are a more technical um, more legally constructed you know um, course of action All right, I hope that is clear now down to the types of conflict. There are so many types of conflict that exist, so many types, all right? But some of them that are common have been highlighted here. The first one we talk about is intrapersonal conflict, intrapersonal. Now the concept or the term intrapersonal means that something is happening inside the person. That is intrapersonal. So intra is inside, inside the person conflict. And that's why is also called man against self conflict. The conf interpersonal conflicts are also referred to as man against self conflict. All right, this, these are these are conflicts that occur inside the mind of individuals, and of course, these conflicts are more common, you know, to psychologists. All right, they occur inside the mind of individuals and are dictated by circumstances around that individual. So, issues like depression like suicidal thoughts, you know, all of those are conflicts. But people do not necessarily tell you this is what's going on inside their mind. Their mind basically is the battlefield, all right? And of course, you, you have an idea of what's going on in the mind because of how they behave or the kind of um, the kind of, of behavior tendencies, traits that you see them exhibit, all right? Uh, this type of conflict, I've talked about depression, frustration, addiction, all of these are intrapersonal conflicts because they go on inside the person all right there are conflicts as well the second is interpersonal 
this is between persons inter means between all right between person conflict um, and it says that this is man against man conflict It's also referred to as man against man type of conflict you know where you have two people that are that are in conflict that are fighting over ideas over interest you know or what have you now this conflict can be physical meaning it can be explicit there can be violence involved there can be weapons involved or it can be non-physical it can be implicit you know where two people are not just talking to each other two people are keeping malice you know two people are not in talking terms you know you might not necessarily know that there's something i mean they might just be seated together in the same in the same in the same pew but they're not talking to each other and you 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 have no idea exactly that they are in conflict so conflicts inter interpersonal conflicts can either be physical you know or non-physical can be explicit or implicit depending on the circumstances involved the third kind of conflict are described as man against society conflicts and here um, the conflict occurs between individuals and man-made institutions or man-made um, practices you know corruption bad governance all of these are man-made you know human trafficking smuggling you know um, human rights abuses all of these are man-made circumstances practices that individuals once in a while um, disagree with you know try to contend or fight against those are man against society kinds of conflicts all right man against nature conflict is another type and here um, individuals are at war with nature global warming people are trying to contend global warming try to fight against to reduce climate change or reduce the impact of flooding you know and in fact in fact this is even this is even uh, this is this is it's on the, this, this is on a lighter note you know you find that you find out that people are afraid of certain creatures certain insects you know like cockroaches or lizards and when 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 they see this 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 um these animals they you know they have a, a kind of reaction that's a conflict situation you know so that's that's what we mean by man against nature conflict and of course the fifth one is family conflicts you know of course this is this will be very very familiar um, to all of us, if not almost all of us, rather, if not all of us, um, conflicts that occur within family units between the father and mother, or siblings, you know, cousins, distant and close, um, family members, relatives, you know, and what have you. These conflicts usually occur or arise, they arise out of, you know, um, roles, expectations in the family that are not met or that are. That are, that are not not adequately met all right these cause conflicts so conflicts within that unit of the family is what we refer to as family as family conflicts all right there's the intergroup conflict as well intergroup conflicts are disagreements between between you know groups religious groups ethnic groups you know interest groups and what have you um, they could they could be christian muslim conflicts you know there could be conflicts um among among political parties you know those are inter intergroup conflicts all right not necessarily elections but you know when when political parties are at war apc pdp you know lashing one another you know over candidacy or over over um you know over several things you know you you, you understand how the Nigerian political system works. So these are these are things that we refer to as intergroup intergroup conflicts. And of course, some of them are listed. Examples are listed here. You know, there's there's the there's the conflicts in um, in most of the northern parts between the Fulani and the Biroms, which is another um, which is the Christian part of the of of the north. All right. You have the Shekiri Urubo Ijo conflicts Niger Delta. You have the Ife Modakeke. That is more. Uh, that's more southern you have the aguleri umuleri conflict you know somewhere in kogi state so these are intergroup conflicts conflicts between groups you know whether religious groups or ethnic groups um interest groups communal groups or what have you now number seven is the intrastate conflicts remember we said inter is between between groups inter is between groups intra on the other hand is inside the state 
all right intrapersonal we said is inside the person so also is intrastates within the state so intrastate conflicts are conflicts that arise within state boundaries um, the conflicts occur within state boundaries they don't they don't go they don't exceed the state boundaries the boundaries of sovereign states now so they occur within state boundaries and these conflicts arise um, around issues of land you know um, water use you know development is not it's not even and of course we had issues like that in the in the 1960s when they not you know um, did not feel that they were developing at the same pace as the east and the south and of course that was what led eventually to the nigerian civil civil war you know uh, you have you have the rwandan genocide um which of course is also referred to as an intrastate interstate conflict okay so remember we said that not all conflicts are wars but wars are conflict situations so we are trying to identify what are the types of conflict situations that occur and intrastate conflicts are one of such types of conflicts so these conflicts occur within state boundaries and of course they center around resource allocation resource control you know how much of the national of, of national um, reserve or the national budget is allocated to each state or to what group of individuals for what and all of those issues all right those are intrastate conflicts um, interstate conflicts, on the other hand, are conflicts that occur between states. So these conflicts occur um, outside; they extend beyond the, the the boundaries of states, you know, and they occur the conflicts between two or more sovereign states. All right, and these conflicts are over um, land encroachment, you know, diplomatic ties, you know, bridges in diplomatic ties illegal importation or exportation as 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 the case may be and so on and so forth and of course several several examples also abound um, we had the Bakasi Peninsula conflict between Nigeria and Cameroon when Cameroon claimed that Nigeria was encroaching into the Cameroonian um, space with the Bakasi Peninsula you know and that the Bakasi Peninsula belonged to Cameroon and not Nigeria and of course that that conflict lingered for a long time until you know I think 2003 or two thousand and two or three rather when um when there was a there was a there was an international court of justice verdict saying that um Nigeria should cede that portion to Cameroon. So Cameroon um you know that that portion of, of land now belongs to Cameroon and the conflict. You know, so that is one example of interstate conflicts. Conflicts between between two sovereign states, you know, and of course uh the Cuba missile crisis between the US and and the Cuba 1962 it's also another example of interstate conflicts and finally we have the global conflict all right global conflicts um this this is this is a little different from the interstate conflict because in the global conflict um it extends there there involves or there's the involvement of more than two certainly more than two states okay and um, in this kind of conflict, um, there's there's mutual efforts from three or more states, because certainly more than two, from more than three states, in fact, in trying to um, suppress or overturn the common enemy. So there's a common enemy that more states come together to try to overcome. That is what we refer to as the global conflict. So global conflict is wider in scope. It's wider than the interstate conflict in scope. Even though, of course, it involves um, it involves more than two actors, or more than two sovereign actors. But in most cases, these actors, these sovereign state actors, are in one camp. Now, understand what I'm what I'm trying to drive at. I'm saying that in the interstate conflict, you have two sovereign actors or more than two sovereign actors in opposite camps so for instance if you have three states that are at war there's a there's a high probability that two states will be in one on one side you know and the one state will be on the other side depending on the the power capability capacity of these states all right and that is what you see in the syrian 
in the Syrian war, where it seems that Syria and the and Russia on one hand, you know, the U.S. Israel are on the other hand, as as well as the the militants or the the rebel groups, you know, that are trying to um that the, the rebel groups are trying to seize power from from the dictatorship, basically. So so in an interstate conflict, you know, you find out that on the two sides of the divide are sovereign states. Whereas in a global conflict, sovereign states would naturally almost always um, align to one side while the enemy is on the other side. You know, and that example fits well with the war, global war on terror. You know, and of course, it also slightly fits well with the First and Second World War, you know, where the entire world um 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 came you know of course and was fighting a common enemy you know the 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 communist uh, the communist regime of germany um you know so so basically global conflicts are conflicts that extend beyond two sovereign states and the conflicts that also extend in scope you know um to various parts of the globe, various parts of the world that have consequences directly or indirectly for many more parts of the world other than the conflict or the, the states that are involved in the conflict. And that also is the case with the First World War and the Second World War. So in the First and Second World War, and as, of course, as well as the, glo the global war on terror, uh, you find out that the conflicts that are involved in the conflict you know, the scope of the conflict extends beyond these countries, all right? Because the global war on terror is more pronounced in Africa, perhaps it's more pronounced, you know, it's more pronounced in Africa, in the various parts of Africa, not east, south, west, you know, but of course, south, uh, sorry, east and west, particularly, and north, of course, particularly, all right? But in many other parts of the world, there's 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 high security alerts. Every every country is is on the alerts um, to try and prevent themselves from being targets of targets of terrorism. So the point is that in global conflicts, the scope of the conflict is wide. So also are the actors numerous. I think that is how to put it in a more simpler form. The scope is wider it means that the conflict extends and has direct or indirect impact on more parts of the globe and of course there are also many more actors involved you know in such a global conflict state actors as well as non-state actors that's how global conflicts differ from interstate conflicts interstate conflicts are a maximum of three two countries um, sovereign states having a disagreement all right. So those are those are the types of conflicts that are, that that we have in literature: intrapersonal, interpersonal, intergroup conflicts, man against society, man against nature, you know, um, interstates, interstates, and of course global conflicts. All of these are types of conflicts that we have. Now, the forms of conflict. How do these types of conflicts manifest? All right. Um, of course, you have revolts. There are there are revolts. There are revolutions. There are insurgencies. There are meet there are mutinies. There are protests. All of these are forms of conflicts. You know, there are forms in which conflicts manifest. All right. A revolt is simply an uprising against established um, order. You know, and of course, the difference between a revolt and a revolution is that while a revolution intends to change completely the order of things a revolt doesn't necessarily intend to change um anything it's just it's just uh, it's just an uprising against you know some aspects of an order that seem uncomfortable or that seem um you know unacceptable or what have you but the revolution on the other hand is mostly violent number one and of course it intends to completely change you know the status quo change the order of things and restore or an institute a new order of things that is that is what a revolution is intended to achieve an insurgency on the other hand is an uprising against the state 
So an insurgency is an is, is an uprising against the state. A revolution might ne might not necessarily be against the state. You can have a revolution within an organization, within a private organization. You can have a, rev a revolution where the employees, you know, do not like the the system of leadership, and perhaps they want to they want to change completely that order of leadership that exists within the organization. But in the in 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 an insurgency, um, you have you have you have um, a group, you know, an armed group, a rebel group, that rises up against the state, you know, and the intention is either to achieve certain uh, certain agenda, or to try and get the state's attention on certain issues that bother such a group, you know, such a section of the of the of the state, or a rebel section or armed group, or what have you. A mutiny is a conflict within the military organization. All right. Is a kind of uprising against the leadership of the in the military, so either against the higher command or the commander in chief, what have you. Um, so a mutiny is a, a mutiny is a conflict that occurs within the military organization, and insurgency occurs within the states. A revolution, you know, intends to change the order of things completely and restore a new or institute install a new order. A revolution is simply an uprising against existing order all right um a protest is organized mass mostly peaceful you know and some in some cases violent demonstration against government you know um or a policy or decision by government and what have you um, but the, of course not necessarily government as well a protest can also occur in private setting so these are some forms of conflict um some forms via which conflicts um, manifest or through which conflicts um, you know manifest and we can see that conflicts are occurring especially in in a, in a larger societal context you know conflicts can occur in in revolts in revolutions insurgencies mutiny or protests now how do we explain conflicts why do conflicts occur? What are the causes of conflicts? Now, remember we said that conflict is a very complex concept, it's very dynamic, meaning that it is going to be difficult to explain the cause of conflict um, from a single perspective or from, from a narrow perspective. In order for us to properly understand the causes of conflict, it's important to have a more holistic um, view of conflicts or try to explain more broadly why certain conflicts have occurred and of course each conflict is unique so in trying to explain conflicts conflicts must be analyzed you know in specifics every conflict is unique so you cannot use the analysis of one conflict to try and explain another conflict all right uh, because every conflict is unique in its environment by its actors you know by the method of the such conflict, by the consequences it has, every conflict is unique. But here are some of the explanations that help us understand why conflicts occur. Um, the first one is the structural theory. Uh, the structural theory basically argues, perhaps I, sh perhaps I should stay before I, before I begin to explain uh, these theories, I should say that theories generally um, are windows through which we can, we can perceive certain issues we can understand better you know why certain things occur how they occur and for what reason they occur theories help us theories help to provide more information basically into certain phenomenon and thank god um we have we have an entire topic on theories of conflict and in that in, in that in that topic we're going to look you know into more detail as to what are the various theories that help us to explain and better understand conflict, you know, and perhaps peace as, as um, two separate phenomena. So back to our explanation on the structural theory. The structural theory, like I was saying, explains that structures and organizations of society, you know, the way society is structured and organized can be a source of conflict. All right? So it, if society is organized in such a way that people feel excluded, people feel deprived, people feel in, on, unequal, you know, people feel that there's inequality, classes, 
you know some some people um, are benefiting more than others if that is how a society is structured then of course such a structure is bound to breed conflict all right so the structural theory is basically explaining that the one of the causes of conflict you know is the structure or the organization is the way the society is structured and organized it's as simple as that that is the structural theory the structural organization of society is one reason why conflicts occur the second theory is the marxist theory here um of course Karl marx the marxist theory basically says that society is divided into two groups of individuals you have the bourgeoisies who are the who are the ruling class you know and they are they are usually few in number the ruling class the bourgeoisie they are usually few in number and then you have the other class which are the proletariats they are more in number they are the ones who are in the lower class they are either middle class you know always struggling to make ends meet or they are very poor and deprived so those are the two classes that exist in society according to the marxist theory and Karl Marx is saying that one of the causes of conflict is because there is a constant competition between these two classes right there's a constant struggle between these two classes the proletariats are constantly struggling you know to to gain from the bourgeoisie is what they feel is rightly theirs all right whereas the bourgeoisie are also struggling to hold on to the leadership to the benefits to the wealth that should be shared you know among all the members of society so this struggle between these two classes um, results in conflict that's what the marxist theory explains that the cause of conflict is the struggle between the two classes that exist in society the bourgeoisies and the proletariats the international capitalist theory is the third theory that helps to explain the cause of conflict and this theory basically is saying that western countries desperately explore the raw materials you know investment climates in developing nations at the expense of the peace and prosperity of these nations so and of course you know that in the colonial era you know we had so many expeditions from europe from america from portugal spain on the african continent you know trying to extract as much as possible both man and material resources from the continent all right at the expense of the peace at the expense of development of the prosperity of africa and africans themselves all right now this theory argues that one of the causes of conflict is the continued influence that the western market capitalist economy continues to have on the developing economy of africa you know latin america and other developing parts of the world the continued influence of these western these western ideologies western economies you know is one of the causes of conflict because these western influences continue to increase the level of poverty they continue to increase the level of unemployment they continue to increase the level of hunger to increase the level of exploitation economically and politically and so at some point people get to the breaking point and conflict occurs so the international capitalist theory explains that one of the causes of conflict is the influence the the lingering influence of western capitalist economies you know and capitalist political system um as 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 you have it all right so of course you also have the economic livelihood theory which says that um there's a link you know between politics between power between resources and conflict you know and and it's it is is a more logical link you know when you have scarce resources then of course there's a higher probability for conflict because resources available are not sufficient to meet the needs of the population on ground you know and of course when you have more resources then there's less likelihood of conflict so the more the resources available the lesser the likelihood of conflict the lesser the resources available the more likely you know conflict situations are going to occur all right 
And so conflict occurs, according to the economic livelihood theory, conflict occurs as a result of constant competition among people over scarce resources, you know, that they have to struggle, you know, to get for themselves, to survive for livelihood, you know. So constant competition among or for these scarce resources are what eventually lead to conflict. Um, that's what the economic livelihood theory says. Remember, we are talking about the causes of conflict. And all these theories are explaining, you know, one aspect of why conflicts occur. All these theories are explaining various reasons, you know, various causes of conflict. And like I said, um, it is difficult to understand conflict from, you know, or it's going to be it's going to be difficult or inappropriate to try and explain conflict from one of these sources. It's going to be narrow. It's going to be a narrow explanation. In order to have a robust, you know, holistic explanation of conflict, it's important to combine two or more of these explanations in trying to explain. Well, it depends on the kind of conflict that is being explained anyway, but. Um, in certain issues, in certain, in certain cases, you know, there might be a need to combine two or more explanations in order to try and explain, you know, comprehensively why certain conflicts have occurred. The realist theory basically says that conflict occurs as a result of the inherent nature of man. So for the realist, the human nature is one major cause of conflict. Man naturally, you know, is a is a conflictual um it's a conflictual being and at one point in time those conflictual tendencies will just naturally surface so the human nature is is a is a cause of conflict for the realist for the biological theory um the cause of conflict for them is the genetical transfer of this conflictual nature from generation to generation so, as ancestors hand over their conflictual nature to others or to, to, to our parents, our parents, to our forefathers, rather, parents, forefathers, these our forefathers also handed this conflictual nature down to us. And we are also going to hand over this conflictual nature down to our children. So, as the human nature, which the realists say is conflictual, as human nature is handed down from generation to generation, you know, um, conflict is 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 being is breed is breeding. You know, conflict is is breeding, and at some point, that human nature, that conflictual human nature, will eventually, um, you know, burst open and letting letting conflict occur, you know, whether physically or non-physically, explicitly or implicitly, as the case may be. And finally, there's the frustration, aggression, or the frustration, anger, aggression theory, which says that individuals naturally react to unpleasant situations, you know, by being frustrated. All right. So frustration is the first stage um, when people do not do not get the desired goal or are not able to achieve the desired outcome of a process. They become frustrated. All right. And such frustration may lead to anger to anger, um, which of course can be triggered leading to aggression, you know, and, and aggression is an act of violence against another person or another group of people um, that is perhaps unrelated to the issue um, that is on ground. Let me give an instance. If, if you have two people who are fighting, you know, over a pair of, sh of shoes, uh, it is very likely that the pair of shoes it's not the reason for the argument. If you probe further, you will see that there has been a frustration, you know, on either side of 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 the party of the parties involved in the fight. There must have been there, there must have been a frustration, you know, by on one of the people involved in the fight must have been frustrated over another issue that you know might not be related to that would definitely not be related to the issue that they're fighting over. You know, and then that frustration may have lingered for so long, you know, the person may have become angry about it, you know, and then, of course, the shoe incident happened and the aggression um, followed that anger. So 
the frustration aggression frustration anger aggression rather is saying that individuals you know do not just necessarily bust out conflict goes through a process it first of all begins by frustration because of unmet expectations and goals which graduates to anger you know and then aggression results um, which of course now brings about conflict so these are some of the ways by which we can explain the causes of conflict it can either be by frustration it can either be as a result of the genetical transfer of the human nature from generation to generation it can be as a result of the human nature it can be as a result of competition for scarce resources it can be as a result of the structure and organization of society it can be as a result of you know the international or the, the lingering western influence you know capitalist influence it can be as a result of you know of the competition the struggle among the two classes of society in the marxist theory so these are some explanations that have been put forward to try and explain the causes of conflict in conclusion we have identified that conflicts are inevitable so individuals cannot avoid completely conflict situations we've talked about some of the types of conflicts ranging from the intrapersonal conflicts in psychology you know to the sociological conflicts where man is in conflict against nature or against society you know to conflicts that are intergroup or intergroup conflicts so intrastate and interstate to global conflict and all of those other types of conflict. we've talked about the forms of conflict as well protests revolts revolutions mutinies insurgencies and so on and so forth and we have talked also about the difference between a war and a conflict situation we have underscored the fact that not all conflicts are war situations whereas all wars are conflict situations because they involve disagreements among the parties involved all right well i hope that this has been a helpful presentation if you have questions or comments arising from this presentation um, we can do well to ask them and of course we can continue the conversation thank you very much for listening